Well, Ricky Hill, thank you so much for being here today. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Well, I'm I'm happy to have you with me to talk about The Hill, your new movie, uh, where the story of, of your life really is coming out into theaters uh, here on Friday. Tell me a little bit about how the opportunity to have a movie about your life even came about. Um, as I was playing professional baseball in uh, 1976 and 77, um, my brother wrote the story about... My brother was involved in our church. He wrote the story about how difficult it was for my life, the whole life of the, for 18 years, for me able to get to where I was and then to make it how miraculous that virtually impossible. They called all the odds against me. And he wrote this story and he wrote it for our family only, not for anyone else, but our family. But a few guys our church got it, took it to Hollywood, and then Hollywood wanted to buy the story. <laughs> and so they came calling in 1978. And that's a long time ago. But um, I had to turn it down because my dad and my mother both became ill at the same time. My father didn't make it. My mother did she had brain tumor my dad had pancreas cancer at the same very time and um uh which was very hurtful and it was during the years i had a few more years left in baseball which was for me to even get there was incredible because i had no disc in my spine people didn't realize i hadn't i was born with no disc I, my grandmother and my great-grandmother were in wheelchairs i've never seen them any different and I was headed in the same direction. So that's how it all came out. You know, I, I, for people who might not know your story uh, and, and just how miraculous it is that you were able to go on to play uh, professional baseball, uh, tell us a little bit about what your upbringing was like because you had a significant, a significant health issue that you had to wear leg braces that were incredibly heavy. Uh, you, as you mentioned, had a spinal issue. Talk a little bit about some of that. Well, you know, it's, um, it never, ever stopped me. I, uh, I just, I was that kind of kid that was so tenacious that I just felt like I could do anything. Even with the leg braces, I hit rocks every day and through by me hitting rocks every day, sometimes 2000 a day hitting rocks. Cause that's all we had financially. It's free, you know, rocks are free and a stick is free. And so I hit rocks just every day for years uh, and um, it made me into a, I developed a swing a base a swing with a basically with a bat that when it come time for me to get out of these braces I'm ready to I'm ready to tag a few baseballs and it that's that was the tough thing you know growing up from from years you know when I was born because it all started when I was born because my legs were wrapped around each other and then the spine was connected to that as well, which created the problems that we didn't know because back then in those 50s, born in the 50s, you don't know. You just don't know. And they they did exploratory surgeries, several of them. I don't can't tell you how many, but several. And so wound up, uh, uh, we wound up uh, I fighting, I fought my battle all the way through it and hit rocks, did everything I could. And uh, then one day, uh, at eight years old, I busted those braces off. I never put them back on. Hmm. Yeah, where did that perseverance come from as a kid uh, to trust, you know, this is something that I am so passionate about that I'm going to essentially throw caution to the wind and I'm going to do what I need to do to get to that, to get to that point of success. Where did that tenacity in you come from? It came straight from, it came straight from God himself. I'm telling you, it was a deal that, uh, I um I knew one day that I would make it somehow, some way. It didn't matter the pain. I weathered the pain because it was very painful, but I weathered that storm through the pain, and uh, uh, I just had it built in. My father had it. I had it. Same same thing. And you know your 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 relationship with your dad is one that evolved 
over time because he was a preacher and he was he was certain that that you were supposed to be to follow in his footsteps and also be a preacher. Obviously, uh, you had different plans and the Lord had different plans for your life. Talk about that evolution of the relationship with your father of of coming to a place of acceptance uh, that this is something you wanted to pursue and it was something that the Lord had for you. Well, you know, let me say uh, let me say this so people, some of them needs to understand this. It was somewhat my fault that. I, my dad wanted me to be in the ministry because I would grab a, I grab a bench, go outside and I start preaching to the world. I'm beating on that bench and I'm telling everybody about the gospel at eight years old, seven years old. I'm preaching the gospel to everyone. And, uh, it was really, my dad would look out the window and he see me doing that. And then at the same, then 15 minutes later, I'm picking up rocks and hitting rocks. But I always got, they got a sermon in a day and he was watching me doing it. And so he thought I was called to be a preacher, which, he did, which he's right. You know, I was, there's different ways of ministry, of course, different ways. And, uh, and by me, when I became a professional, I also, I did, I, I witnessed while I was out there on the ball field. Talk a little bit about that as you went into playing baseball professionally. Uh, obviously, I, I can't imagine, because as someone who's seeing your story, I can obviously look and watch and see how miraculous it is uh, and how just unexpected the success that you had has been. But as somebody who's experiencing it, you're feeling it from a different perspective, obviously. So talk a little bit about what it was like to to achieve the success that you did. Was it something that you anticipated or were you as surprised as everyone around you was? Well, I had to go the hard way. Uh, the way that I did it, um, from what I've been told, it, the way that I signed this major league contract has never happened in the history of baseball. And that in itself pretty much tells uh, a story itself. Um, but saying that I, I felt like I belonged there, even though, yes, I was, you know, 17 years old, 16 years old. They tell me that I could never play because I have no disc. My spine, they're crumbling. My discs are crumbling, just like my grandmother, great mother, my great grandmother. And, um, and there's not a, really a surgery, a surgery to patch me up at that time, because it is a little beyond the times of them in the 50s. Um, I said it could patch me up, but their baseball is out of the question. But I threw that out the window as soon as they told me where I just threw it out the window. I said, nah, I'm playing. And I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play till every tire goes flat. Hmm. Tell me a little bit about um, about your faith, because obviously, like as we said, you you grew up in a, a, a Christian family. Your father was a preacher. You preached as a little kid. You would share the gospel. Talk a little bit about that and how your trust in the Lord evolved as your story evolved. Well, you know, as my story evolved, when I became a professional, uh, I knew I, could, I would carry it on. Um, I was probably the only baseball player ever that never said a curse word, <laughs> but I, uh, would get on the bus on the buses and I, I'd, I'd start preaching to the guys on the bus, you know, the guys that would listen and singing songs, leading gospel songs while we're on the road, Lord traveling. And, um, it carried on through, through my baseball career, um, uh, when I was 24 and I was paralyzed on the field, um, I didn't understand it, why God took away my gain. I did not, that one I didn't understand. But my, I, I de never gave up hope and faith. And I went through major surgeries and restored my legs. And also I've got nine screws in my spine. I have nine screws. I have six cages and a 14 inch rod that holds me together. And, uh, today I'm very thankful. I could even go play around a round of golf if I wanted to, which is wonderful, wonderful. And so saying all that, my faith in Jesus, my faith in the Lord is even this movie has brought me even just closer, just closer to God, just because. Because what I went through, it, it brings me closer to Jesus Christ. 
because I know that he, this story was ordained before I was even in my mother's womb. Yeah. Yeah. And it's incredible to see. Uh, it, it's just moving to hear you talking about it because you did end up becoming the preacher that your father thought you were going to become. Uh, you just did it uh, on the ball field or on the bus uh, to the players around you. And it's just incredible to see the Lord uh, being faithful and fulfilling both of those dreams uh, in your life. Can you talk a little bit, reflect a little bit on what it feels like to see both of those things come to fruition in your life? I, you know, when you look back at it, I'm so thankful that I got to fulfill both of them, even though that when I collapsed on the ball field, people don't know, but I collapsed on the ball field and I had no legs. I never gave up hope that God would would restore my legs, which he did. Gave me a surgery, uh, a $600,000 surgery. A man, a man from Germany fixed my, came in, fixed my back and he said, he told me, he said, Ricky, the only two people that can fix your back is me and God. And I said, I like my, I like 50% of my chances. And guess what? And they, they fixed it. They, uh, like I said, they did all that. But to, to my faith, I never were, I never varied from my faith ever. I did. I didn't. Like I said, like I said before, I fought the fight. I kept the faith. Yeah. And then, you know, I want to ask you as we're rounding out the conversation to see your movie now hitting the silver screen and people are going to actually uh, really get to not just hear your story or read about your story, but to see it. Uh, tell us what, what you want the takeaway to be for people who are walking out of the theaters. What do you want them to walk away thinking about? Well, you know, the, I think about this, you know, I didn't ask to be born this way. And, um, but it was God's chosen for me to be the vessel for this, for this film. I, I'm just the vessel. I'm nothing more. I'm nobody any greater than you or anyone else. I want them taken away that, you know what, that I kept, I kept fighting and I didn't. And I also, I did lean on the Lord on everything. Because he said, you know, ask and it shall be given unto you. And all I did was ask. In fact, he probably got tired of me asking. So finally, I, I, um, everything, everything that was supposed to come, come true, it came true. I got to witness at the same time I got to play professional baseball. And if you look at it in those directions, both of those were accomplished exactly what my father wanted. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Ricky Hill, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk with us. The movie is The Hill, uh, starring Colin Ford and Dennis Quaid. Uh, that is out in theaters this Friday. Thank you, Ray.